Hi, and welcome back to the Board Summit. I'm Diana Wild, and uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce the next session to you. This afternoon, we have a fireside chat with experienced female directors. The conversation is led by our moderator, Mina. Uh, Mina al -Arabi. Mina, over to you. Thank you, Diana. Um, delighted to be with you in spirit, if not physically with you all. Um, my name is Mina al -Arabi. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of The National. And first, I'd like to thank Sheikh Hashemma, uh, thank you, Diana, thank the whole team behind uh, Aurora 50 and putting this uh, great two-day event on for us. Um, today, I am delighted uh, to moderate a session with two incredibly distinguished women um, whose bios and achievements are so long that I won't be able to tell you all about them, but I can tell you that uh, Sheikha Lubna bint Khalid Al-Qasimi is genuinely one of those people that are beyond introduction. Of course, she was um, the first Emirati woman to assume a ministerial post. She has um, led the charge on many fronts um, in helping not only women, a younger people, all sorts of um, achievements in the UAE. Um, she has also been on a number of diverse boards, academic, philanthropic, um, but most importantly, she's now on the INEC board, which is the Emirates Nuclear Energy Company, and she'll tell us some of that. I am also very delighted to have uh, Taiba Al Hashimi, who again is one of um, these dynamic women who are making her imprint on the UAE and beyond. She is currently CEO of Al Yassad. She has a, a distinguished career in chemical engineering um, and has her BA in chemical engineering, um, women leading the charge on STEM, very important in our part of the world and globally. Um, she is also a board member in Adnoc Onshore Company. Um, however, she has had also a very interesting career on boards and she'll, she'll talk to us about some of that. Um, so welcome to those of you who are joining us on this session. Just a few housekeeping notes. First of all, you can ask questions and we encourage you to ask questions early on in the session and we will try to incorporate as many of them as we can during this hour that we have together. Um, if you need any help, there is a help uh, button on your um, app that you can go to. And I would also say that important to keep in mind that the questions, we will not identify who's actually asking questions, but this session itself um, will be uh, online in the future so you can refer back to it. So this is an on the record uh, conversation. So with that, before we start, we want to ensure getting as many of you involved in this conversation and that's through a poll. So we are going to have a poll come up on your screens and we encourage you to take part. And the first question is among those questions that I'm sure many boards consider when they think about their candidates. And the first question says, how many years of experience do you need before you join a board? So that's the, the first question that's there for you um, to answer. And you have um, uh, bands of different years that are necessary. And the second question is, do you think, uh, we will give you some time to answer these, um, because I appreciate that we have a bit of a, a time lag. So you have five to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, 15 to 20 years, or more than 20 years. Um, and the second question will come up shortly once you answer this one. And that will be about, do you need industry experience to join a board? And uh, Sheikh Lubna, I want to come to you to ask you these two questions as our uh, uh, participants give their answers. And that is about how important is age and years of experience and how important um, industry experience uh, and how important industry experience is. Um, we have actually our results. So Sheikh Lubna, we, we have the majority of the participants here believe that 56 0.52% believe that you need 10 to 15 years before joining a board. 21.7% believe you need five to 10 years. Um, and 13.04% well, believe you need 15 to 20 years. So a lot of years of experience. 
and then only 8.7 percent believe you need more than 20 years experience so that's what our uh, participants in this conversation believe i'd like to turn the question to you right um let me begin first um to say thank you to your highness uh, Sheikh Hashemna, the Sultan Khalifa Al Nahyan, for setting up this beautiful summit uh, on boards and uh, gender equality and gender balance um, i think this is very crucial and um, I'd like to extend uh, my gratitude um, to the group and the organizers behind this. Um, they've been quite instrumental in setting up everything from the, um, the lively connectivity to uh, uh, supporting us on every step. So thank you, ladies, uh, as part of this organization. Uh, when you talk, if, if, have you asked me this question maybe 10 years ago? Um, about the number of years of experience. I may have said uh, more than 10 years, but looking at the type of companies that come up right now, um, the, a lot of the startups, a lot of the companies related to um, a new technology um, really ca cannot have someone with a, a lengthy experience um, because it's all brand new technology and new fields uh, and therefore um, I would actually think five to 10 years as a start for particular companies is quite crucial. But critical to all of this is the type of experience that you have. And um, this I'll, I'll talk about in the next point. So your second question was about, um, does the uh, industry knowledge uh, is important to, uh, to being a board member? Um, in particular cases, I think it is, um, especially in technology. For example, I was a board member of ENEC, the uh, Emirates Nuclear Energy Corporation. And within that, um, there was quite a lot of industry knowledge that was needed, however, the company was smart enough because it was brand new uh, uh, technology and industry in the UAE, um, managed actually to support all the board members in terms of their orientation, uh, in terms of creating workshops for them. So in my mind, um, you can always um, uh, take an approach as a company to fulfill any needs uh, of the board for the industry specific if it needs to. But what's more critical is the understanding of the board member of what's, what is expected of the board member. Uh, uh, for example, the organization uh, uh, policy, uh, strategy, um, value of the company itself, what it means. Uh, one of the crucial parts, especially in publicly listed companies, is the brand equity. Uh, many people don't think about this, but um, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you talk about Johnson Johnson uh, with one product that was messed up by mistake, it, it actually uh, impacted the company negatively on their share value. And therefore, um, the communication to the public, the brand value and the understanding the brand itself, what it means uh, by the board members is very critical. Understanding financial information and performance of the finance um, in all companies, even including philanthropic, but uh, more importantly, of course, in publicly listed uh, companies. Um, so to me, these are the values that are critical to the knowledge of a board member. Thank you. So, so your point is very interesting about how your own um, belief system, let's say, has, has uh, progressed as, um, you know, uh, companies change and our day-to-day our -day, um, changes. So if we can uh, please put in the poll on industry experience, it would be great to know what our um, participants think about the importance of industry experience. And um, say, but if I can please turn to you and similarly ask you about the importance of having industry experience, but also how things have changed for board members here in the UAE. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk today. It has been an extremely fruitful day so far with very rich and high level insights from all variable speakers uh, we have heard and the audience as well. Uh, I'm personally honored to be part of this event and sitting virtually 
next to the one of the brilliant lady as her excellency sheikh lubna al qasmi the first uh, emirati woman to assume ministerial role in 2004 as you just mentioned mina um, and as we approach the Emirati Women Day, allow me to send my deepest appreciation to Her Excellency Sheikha Fatma bint Mubarak, mother of the nation, for her tremendous support to women empowerment in UAE and outside the borders as well. And a special thank to Sheikha Shamma bin Sultan bin Khalifa for this important initiative uh, toward women empowerment uh, as well. And thank you all uh, to, to all Emirati women who contributed to the successes in 2020 that we are ce celebrating uh, this year. Um, going back to your question, uh, Mina, regarding the uh, a member in a board, uh, if we look at what the, the role of the board member itself, it is integral role in overseeing organization objectives, strategy, performance to maximize values and to create uh, additional investment uh, and return and additional uh, value uh, to, to each organization in short term or in a long term. Um, I believe that in UAE, uh, we recognize women not because it is the right thing to do, but also because it makes business sense. Gender diversity in leadership, I believe, contributes to the innovation thinking that drive competitive uh, advantage to any organization. And uh, for instance, if I give you some reflection in, in ADNOC, uh, today, 22 positions in, uh, board, uh, in, as a board members is occupied or held by uh, female, a different uh, range of ages, different years of experience. So I believe diversity helps make companies more profitable, uh, more innovative, and more respected. Um, this year, which is uh, the preparation for the next 50 years of our country, I think more and more empowerment to have uh, more women in a board of directors uh, we will achieve, with, uh, similar to this initiative that we are talking about today, 24 or 20 and 2020. Back to you, Mina. Thank you so much, Taiba. Um, and you know, just to, it's so interesting with our polling, do you think it's necessary to have industry experience? 50% said yes, and 50% said not sure. No one said no, so we're all in agreement. Um, but it's very interesting, Sheikh Lubna, because I think this reference is something you were saying earlier that really it depends on the boards also. So I think um, part of the not sure is probably people who want more nuance and details. Um, but the point about diversity, I mean, we're, we're talking about the importance of having women on boards, but diversity also in terms of backgrounds um, and experience. So should diversity be, be made mandatory on all boards? That's going to be our next poll. So for our audience, please uh, feel free to answer this poll once it's up there. Um, but we want to talk about whether making diversity mandatory is something that we should uh, push for. Sheikh Alabna, what are your thoughts on this? The government of the UAE actually had mandated at least uh, one member, uh, a female member, to be on the public companies as a board member. Um, however, I think it all depends on the company and the nature of it. But also what lacks sometimes is the connectivity and the network. Um, men tend to be a uh, network quite strongly and therefore they tend to um, recommend the idea of having some form of database or with a specialization of knowledge amongst women who would like to be board members, I think is very important because that can push um, uh, or at least put a magnifying glass on the women um, but, uh, where they can actually match a particular uh, board to go to. Um, but the idea of um, uh, sometimes the positive reinforcement, sometimes the mandate in itself, uh, quotas, that it can actually trigger the first step. Doesn't mean that that's the only way to do it, but it all depends on the type of the companies, um, who's out there uh, seeking a board membership. But the most challenging actually is having a woman as a chairman of a board. That's really where the biggest challenge um, very few boards actually have women uh, chairing it. Um, but in the crises, I think financial crises that um, uh, uh, the world had gone through, 
it had proven that companies who were chaired by women uh, had much more governance and transparency and delivered better. Um, where that comes from, it's the multitude of uh, culture differences amongst the male-female board, or uh, but it, it actually, there was some results that um, supported the, the presence of women as, as the chairperson. Um, that's really interesting because actually that is even rarer to see, to see women as chairs of boards. So for our live polling, should diversity be made mandatory on all boards? 65% um, said yes, 15% uh, said no, and about 19% said only listed boards, and that, that differentiation is, is quite interesting. Um, Taiba, if I can, if I can ask you, of course, we're living in unprecedented times, at least for this um, past century, which is living through a pandemic and having COVID-19. So I need to ask you what you think the impact of COVID-19 will have on boards, board meetings, board participation. Uh, before uh, this question, Nina, can we see the names of the 15% who says no? <laughs> We're, we're allowing people to, anonymity on this one, <laughs> but I think they should get in touch with you so you can, you can convince them otherwise, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I think uh, the COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic uh, period that we are living in still now today played or challenging us a big time in all our industry, in all, uh, in all our boards and organization. As my personal experience, yes, it is tough. I have to run a lot of planning scenarios to see where we are going. Uh, I'm working in oil and gas sector and where everybody knows that the oil price has went really down. Uh, the execution of some projects really get delayed because of the logistics and material availability, manpower availability, and a lot of restrictions also on the site. So we sat in a board meeting with other board members, my other colleagues, and we tried to uh, all together to think about what's the best way to make sure that business will continue, production will continue with no impact, and also to save our people in the sites because uh, we have um, uh, uh, remote locations where people live there and it is uh, now this location has become restricted for a reason that we don't want to expose those people to any person that might, might have this uh, virus with him. So yes, uh, a lot of pressure on the board members to ensure business continuity as well as to ensure safety, health of our people. But um, at the end of the day, I think we succeeded to, to, do, to do that, to balance between the situation that we are in versus the business uh, continuity that we are, we are working with. Back to you, Mina. Thank you. Thank you, Taiba. Yes, uh, very interesting to, to imagine what those board meetings would have looked like. Um, I'm going to take some of the questions that we have um, posed from uh, participants. So, one is um, regarding culture. Actually, there are, there are a number of questions regarding culture and this idea that culture is often regarded as a barrier in shifting gender balanced boards. Are there any tips on how to manage cultural change in organizations or even among individuals at that level? Uh, Shekhan Lubna, if I can ask you that question. Well, I started my career in a very odd uh, field and that is technology. I was the first woman um, in the UAE to practice technology development um, from the National Computer Center to Dubai Ports Authority to e-commerce platform Sajari.com. At that time, technology was odd. It was only known to be a male dominated field. It was only known that the consultants uh, are the ones who would put strategy. So it was quite tough. But the way to come over any of this is, is really more dependent on how you express your knowledge. I think if you want to be listened to, you have to listen first. And one idea um, or an experience I would like to share with you, when I work for Dubai Ports, that's a maritime industry. The culture amongst the men and the way they run, um, I, I was a senior manager managing software development for the organization, uh, increasing throughput for the board, for the, for the ports, and uh, increasing the value profitability for them. Um, but it was very important first to understand all the lingua, all the, uh, the, the um, 
uh, all the languages that's been spoken around the maritime industry, understanding all the terms that they've got and all the uh, references. Once you understand that, and that took me about two months, um, it was very easy to turn around and demonstrate delivery. And at the end of the day, nobody bothers about who you are. Um, it's not about being sympathetic to you or being nice to you. You have to deliver and your delivery has to be communicated very well. And um, I think within three months, I pretty much um, uh, got my status within the organization as a trustworthy, someone that they can listen to, that I can deliver. So to me, it's the bottom line of delivery. If you are there and you can articulate um, your results, if you can communicate well, um, everything else disappeared. I'm not, um, I, I know this cultural barrier, um, quite a lot of people, but I, I personally believe it's a self-reflection rather than the organization or the community itself. If you're in a place, you have to prove yourself. And if you're a man or woman, you have to do that. But you can't sit behind the curtains and keep saying, because I'm a woman, they may treat me differently. Because if you have that thought, you will not be out there. You have to deliver equally and look at what the organization wants you to deliver. This is personal from personal experience of 35 years. <laughs> Um, Taiba, I see you're nodding your head in agreement with Sheikh um, Adibna. How, how, how do you find that happening also, um, cultural barriers? You're on mute, sorry, Taiba. Um, Mina, let me share my personal experience with this regards. Uh, actually, I have been appointed as Elias CEO in 2019, uh, 2018. And at the same time, I was appointed as a board member of Ednok uh, Sour Gas Company. Uh, in the meantime, uh, overall, I will say that the challenge for me during this period is to demonstrate that I was capable to hold such position with a lot of responsibility to drive business and create values to the organization by managing all the functions and to play two roles, the CEO role in my company or the company that I manage, and also as a board member in the uh, sour gas company. Uh, I look at it, uh, this is something new in Ednok, for instance, that they assigned board members or female board members in the company. And I take the responsibility of proving that women can deliver uh, values, women can bring uh, new ideas and can add new values on the table. Um, I believe that uh, this was a challenge that to prove the women capabilities as well as to sustain the uh, business and business continuity. I think I had to respond to questions uh, faster than before, to learn faster than I used to do so, to bring fresh uh, eyes and a fresh look to our business and to make business better uh, all the time. Uh, it is to prove also that, um, and because a lot of females will follow this uh, role in the future. So for me, it was really uh, a mandate to prove that female, yes, they can bring values on the table and uh, to execute and to ensure business continuity at the same time. Uh, in addition to that, uh, to better or to really understand the role of the board member the responsibility that you are heading, the strategy of this company, the investment available, the revenue we have to generate. So it is the knowledge also is, is really power to, to be a board member and to represent a female in, in a board member. Back to you. Thank you so much, Taylor, because you, you, you raise a point that one of the, the questions being posed um, to us, which is about the, the skills the hard and the soft skills that we need to develop among women in order for them to make meaningful contributions to boards. Now, I'm sure much of what you will say are equally uh, needed amongst men, but I'd like to ask you about that. What the gaps in the hard and the soft skills that we, we should develop? Um, Sheikh Anubna, if I can start with you and then Taiba, I'll return to you on that question. I think um, one important pa uh, part is um, coming uh, well prepared to the board. Um, sometimes uh, you, you have a board pack and you don't read all of it. Um, that will show very soon in your meeting. Um, it, it is important that you understand the, 
decision making, the delegation of authority that's required. So a lot of it really referred back, like Faiba had said, is what the mandate of the organization, what is expected from uh, the, the board uh, in, in, in their role as uh, board members. Um, the, the knowledge itself that you have is really more of experience that you've taken up uh, in organization. So if the CEO talks about situations within the company itself, you can understand it because you have experience. Uh, organization, policy, structure, delegation of authority, finance. Um, but in general, I, I don't think they would, they would, I wouldn't think there should be a difference between um, men and women of what skills they should have. It's, I would call them a board skills rather than uh, male, female. Faiba, are there specific skills, hard or soft, that you would recommend? Um, I totally agree with uh, Sheikha Lubna. Uh, I think um, as a board member, male or female, it doesn't matter, you need to equip yourself with a certain level of knowledge to, uh, to be able to participate or to have an active participation as a board member. Uh, as a board member or then the, uh, the recommendation from the board member to the board chairman should be solid recommendation and a lot of decision will be taken based on your recommendation financially, uh, things uh, related to the strategic, to the people, to the organization itself. So regardless men or women, I think you need to equip yourself with the right skills. Now, what's this right skills? Right skills, first of all, I will say knowledge is the power. You need to understand the the entire business of the company that you are board member and you need to be to come to the meeting well prepared uh, having a lot of a planning scenario what if uh, things went uh, this way or that way you need to to to, to prepare yourself in a better way uh, so that you can have an active participation when when you present there um, i don't see that there is a differentiate difference between skills needed for women but uh, knowledge is the power, I can say. Back to you, Mina. Mina, if I may add one point. Um, yes. I think I, I spoke about this earlier, but I want to emphasize this point because it has become very critical to a lot of organizations, especially publicly listed companies. Um, the communication, the public communication information that goes out from the board itself is very, very critical. Handling uh, difficult situations for example, as Taiba had stated earlier or alluded to, if you have um, crises related to energy, I mean, energy crisis or financial crisis taking place or the COVID-19 at the moment and, and companies where they're actually firing people or letting them go, um, the, the board needs to take very, very seriously nowadays the communication to the public about the performance of the company and the way they tackle issues and challenges because the news goes very fast. You come from the media, you understand that very well, uh, Mina. Uh, this, this has become probably the most critical path and most sensitive point uh, in, in boards and, and making sure that you keep track with the CEO of the company and the communication department. Sometimes they, they may believe that the internal parts of the company and the CEO or the team uh, is very important to submit to the board, but the board gets out of the meeting and uh, faces shareholders, uh, 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 people and, and others, investors um, and lenders and their questions. So there are the questions all the time. And therefore, this particular area, I think, is very, very important to any board nowadays. It doesn't matter what, what uh, industry you're in. Uh, Shagalabna, thank you so much for that uh, point, because it actually also addresses a question that was posed to us about how can you encourage a board member to speak his or her mind uh, during board meetings. So speaking about communication internally also, not the external communication only, but the internal communication and make sure that they are representing, that the board member is representing his or her uh, group or shareholder if, if, if they have that role to play on the board. Um, and how do you manage any conflicts of interest that may arise? So maybe that internal communication part, if you can speak to that, please. Definitely. I think um, um, I, I strongly believe as a board member, it, it is very important that you speak your mind when it's needed. Um, 
sometimes the word used uh, for board uh, qualifications is being intrusive. So the word might sound a bit hard, but in reality, intrusive means that you, you question. You question the company, the performance, in a good way. They, you are not there to uh, find weaknesses. You are there to protect it. So you become, as a board member, maybe the first line of, uh, of defense for it when you ask these questions. Um, stating your, uh, uh, your thoughts are very, very important. But um, within board member policy, um, when you start a meeting, definitely if you have any conflict of interest in any issue, you state it right up front at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and especially in publicly listed companies, that's very, very important. Um, and Teva, if I can, if I can ask you about this, this, this speaking up during a board meeting, one of the questions that was posed is that often um, you can have um, personalities uh, amongst women. I think this is also possible amongst men, but more so amongst women that you you don't feel encouraged to always necessarily challenge or speak up. So you know what what tools, um, what advice would you give for, for women who would like to join boards but are, are nervous about actually playing that role, challenging? Um, maybe um, something that uh, if, 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 they, if the lady really have some difficulties in speaking up, maybe she, she needs to do some practice uh, before that. And doing a practice is, is something normal for people um, in this position, by the way, when they start or at the beginning of their of their uh, career as a board members, and I did this myself. Uh, I w while I'm preparing, I try to link my comments with the objective of the company and mm -hmm. try to explain my point of view. What if we do that? How this is can improve and how this is can uh, direct uh, directly link to our the objective of the company. So it is all about. Uh, logic, it is all about convincing the other members about your point of view and how and explaining the, the idea or the thought or the comments that you have in a right way that it is really linked to the business improvement and business need. It is not, uh, it is it's just a point to, to be discussed. And I think, yes, my advice, if, if there is someone who has communication barrier, I'm calling, let's do some practice in front of Maybe your kids, your husband, I don't know. <laughs> That's That's great. Great. <laughs> You're right. I think sometimes people underestimate how practicing, even in a mock scenario, helps. I mean, we see that sometimes even with people who have never done television interviews. And when you try to prep them for interviews and it's a mock interview, they, they, they learn very quickly. Yeah. Um, if I may? Of course. Yeah. Um, I want just to remind um, people who are on boards or they, they're, they're joining boards, when you make a comment or you ask a question, this, there is no judgment. Uh, no one is going to judge you. And I think people need to remind themselves you're not being judged on a board if you express a certain opinion, even if you differ from the chairman of the board. Um, this is just a point of record that you, you may instigate a particular scenario or a thought that others may not have thought about. But we women sometimes have this tendency to be hesitant because we think, well, maybe if we said it, it wouldn't sound right. Maybe it's actually something minor. Uh, maybe it's, so we, it, it's always related to how, how we're gonna be judged. So mm -hmm. it, it really is not about judgment. You always, I always remind myself, you're not gonna be judged about this. You are not going to be judged about this. So I think it's very important uh, to, think, to keep that in mind that, that this is not about uh, someone judging you if you ask a question. Um, and Lina, if I, if I may add uh, to this point, uh, emotional intelligence is really important in this. Um, what I mean by that, uh, as a, a woman, don't treat yourself as the weakest person in the room. You are not the weakest part or the weakest uh, uh, part of the chain. You are the strongest one. If you believe in this, and you can express this during the meeting, then I think you will position yourself from day one. But come with the full understanding of the business of the company. Don't treat yourself unfair. That's, That's brilliant. Because, because one of the questions that have been posed, and I actually had noted it down that I wanted to ask you also, is about your personal experiences. So the question that, that, that has been posed to us is, you know, what, were, what is the hardest lesson you've learned in your board career 
Did you ever feel overwhelmed perhaps early on in your career? Um, and then, you know, who supported and inspired you as to, to, to help you um, in those boards? Um, so yes, your biggest challenge or your biggest lesson learned, um, but also who inspired you and supported you. So Sheikh Adabna, we'll, we'll turn to you for that one. But I'm going to say something. I don't know how it's going to turn up, but um, my biggest challenge through my career path, and I'm talking about 35 years, is the men's club. And I know this sounds a bit hideous um, to some people, but there is a tendency, and it's a, it's, a, it's a male culture, whereby even if you have meetings and boards, once these meetings are over, the tendency that these men can actually socialize together, whether they are board members or senior management, have that advantage or that edge that we as women don't have. Um, it, it's been several in, in so many organizations where that, that has become uh, advantageous to the men over the women. And if you, if you can not be impacted by it negatively and try to um, communicate as much as you can within the formal environment, uh, but um, I, the, the, the boys club is a tough one to happen. And I think it still exists, whether it's in the gym, whether it's out for a drink, or whether it's a dinner, or a majlis where the men get together. Um, women don't tend to do that. And um, uh, that as a culture is, um, it, it exists everywhere. It doesn't matter where the boys club uh, uh, meets or how, but it does, it, it does exist. So to me, that's the biggest challenge. Um, in terms of being inspired, um, I, I've been at, at, at odds with being in fields and uh, starting things that never happened before. And um, I owe it to my parents of having faith in myself that I can deliver. And uh, when you have supportive government, because most of the, um, I've worked in the government of Dubai um, and in the federal government, that I had the highest support. And, and, and again, like an ENEC with the chairman of the board, uh, His Excellency, uh, uh, Khaldun al Mubarak, you have support, people who are there to support you. So um, it, that really is a driving force um, and an energy for delivery for, for, uh, on a personal path for me. So um, I, I, I feel fortunate to be living and, and be a citizen here as an Emirati in the United Arab Emirates because um, this is a very unique government that has been um, delivering all along, um, not just to the nationals, but the whole community in here by striving new things and um, 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 really um, uh, driving innovation and youth uh, and gender balance uh, in every aspect. So in, in some way, I think we are fortunate. So it just doesn't happen everywhere in the world. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you, Shahabna. Leiva, your, your personal experience. Um, maybe my personal experience is a little, little bit different from what uh, Sheikh Lubna mentioned. Um, for in the first uh, board, which is an Adnok Sour Gas Company, uh, the board chairman was uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Sultan Al Jabr, and the other member is my boss, who has 13 years of experience in the industry, uh, 30 years of experience in the industry. And I came with around 13 to 14 years of experience at this stage. Then I, I, I just, I went prepared. I had a lot, I have all my questions ready. But when I sat there, I said, really, it is matter that the point that I'm gonna mention, and I feel a little bit hesitant, you know, to talk. And this, is, this was my first board, although I went there well prepared. Then the chairman, he asked me fairly, Taiba, what's your opinion? And if you have any comments, please go ahead. Then I felt that, yes, now it is my turn. And now uh, I'm playing the, my role as a board member. And it, it, I always remember this, to start with anything, uh, the first day is really the hard day. Today, the game has changed. Today, it is completely different from my first, uh, my first experience. Maybe something else also I learned is to uh, the, the delegation of authority uh, that we, are, uh, we give the CEO of each company and how we have to respect as a board member that we respect this delegation of authority that given to the CEO. Um, some confusion at the beginning being the board versus the role of the CEO. But of course, yeah, I mean, with time, this got clear, uh, clear to me. Maybe these two things that I would like to, to highlight with the audience today. 
Thank you. That's, you. that's great. I love your personal story of what, what the first meeting is like. Mm -hmm. um, so, so many more questions coming our way. Um, one of them is about blind spots. You know, there are unconscious biases that all of us suffer from and there are blind spots. So one of the questions says, what are the th three critical, and they don't have to be three, you might have one or two. The question says, what are the three critical blind spots you would like women to learn about and acknowledge when preparing for a board? And what are the three critical blind spots men should learn about so that they can have more inclusive boards? Um, so Sheikh Hanoubna, if I can start with you, please. One of the things, and women are good at this, is uh, when you join a board, um, it, just like being a CEO of a company as well, um, you read out and try in your mind profiling the board members. Uh, it is important to understand their characteristics, uh, who they are, their profiling, their background. Same with the CEO of the company, because you can only approach them once you understand them. Uh, and I think sometimes women get in and uh, uh, you know, they become part, part of a, a, a board and then if there is a difference of opinion uh, that could take place or a judgment that's been made, you may take it personally or think uh, this is bias or something, but in reality you need to understand who the other board members are. Um, so um, it is important not to um, tend to judge uh, based, based on a comment made by a board member or something that was said. Uh, to think that maybe that person is not really in line with you or uh, the other way around. Um, you have to have an open mind about this. Uh, and I always believe in throughout my career path, um, if you have differences, uh, try to come over them with that, with that board member or that person because um, at the end of the day, you are jointly going to make critical decisions for the organization. So um, um, leave aside your differences, focus on the outcome that's really important. And um, I, my, my belief as a, as a senior person in organization is if you have a difference or an issue, um, you can speak to that person openly but, and remind them to, to take it as uh, putting the, um, the problem on the table. This, so it's not a personal, it's not about that person. Um, with you, it's really about an issue that you need to resolve. So keeping that in mind, I think it's important. Um, for the men, I, again, um, they, at the beginning, um, within my career itself, uh, um, there had always been hesitance about um, what you do and how you do it. Um, but over time, if you deliver and you demonstrate um, your commitments, I, I think you can change minds around. Um, I, I've had plenty of these at the beginning of my career path, um, but I do believe that um, it is, you are part of that change that you have to make. Thank you. Um, Taiba, the blind spots that women may have, but also blind spots men should be conscious about when building effective and inclusive boards. Um, in addition to what uh, Her Excellency mentioned um, about uh, the um, I think uh, networking is something really important. Uh, reading the profile, as uh, Sheikh Alubna mentioned, this is really important, but also to keep the networking not only during the board meeting or, uh, or uh, during the preparation for the board meeting. I think it is, it is very important to understand the other side, the, 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 mem the other members' thoughts and opinion, and to ask myself always, why he thinks this way, why he th think that way. I think this is important. Networking is not easy when it comes to female versus male because they have a lot of events, occasions where they can gather and keep connected. But again, we can't uh, find a way to keep this networking and communication uh, all the time. Um, I think uh, if there is a mis misalignment between um, my opinion and others' opinion, it is better to discuss it before the meeting. Don't wait for the meeting to highlight the issues or the, uh, the comments. It is good to just call the guy or, or two of them, explain, discuss, and come with alignment. Uh, opinion would come into the board. If there is no alignment, then as Sheikh Alubna mentioned, just put it in the table nothing personal it is all about uh, meeting the objective of the of the company and this is i think applicable for both uh, for both gender men and uh, and women 
back to you, Mina. Thank you so much, Taiwa. We have so many more questions, so I am sorry that I, we only have 15 minutes left. Um, so, so I'm going to be asking you a question, um, and I want you please to be as brief as you can. So CEO, uh, we have a question from a CEO of a new company um, looking to recruit for their board. Should they be recruiting for enthusiasm or experience if they can't find a candidate that has both? Enthusiasm or experience? Uh, we don't know much about the company, so so it's it's a bit of a, a hypothetical here. Sheikh Lubna, would you say enthusiasm or experience? Somebody setting up new. I would go with experience. Experience. Yeah. Enthusiasm would not deliver the bottom line. Taiba, <laughs> 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 what's your response? To have mix of both. If she has the chance to assign more than one, then let's have mix of both. If you had to choose one then experience. Okay, very good. All right, excellent. Um, this is quite interesting. A question that asks, you know, how much time does a board role take? Uh, how many hours a week should you be considering to put that aside? And you may, you know, most people who are on boards are juggling a number of other responsibilities, whether they're personal or, or uh, professional. So in terms of time and capacity, Well, interesting that you asked that question. In general, um, the, the, a person should not handle more than three to four or five boards, but um, we tend here in the Emirates and in the Gulf that if you found someone who's really um, quite the leader, um, you, tend, they, you, know, you tend to, to put that person in so many boards, but then you actually thin out your commitment to all of them. Uh, so uh, a choice of a person is to be on a few numbers of board and then focus on them because the delivery is really what matters at the end of the day. Taiba, for you? Um, I think uh, it, is, it is well planned before. For instance, in, in Adnoka Group, we have uh, planned board meetings for the entire years, uh, three boards per uh, year, unless there is an, a need for, to conduct any um, uh, and a planned uh, board. Uh, the preparation will take from one to two weeks, depend on the uh, objective of that board. It is uh, to take a, a final investment decision, it is to set the strategy, it is the performance of the company, it is what exactly. So I think it depends from, it, it, it's varied from uh, companies to companies. Back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I want to ask you what one piece of advice would you share with a woman seeking to be on a board of a listed company for the first time? What, what advice would you give them, Sheikh um, Lubna? It all depends how she can, I mean, most important part is how can she reach out to these companies to be nominated? So if there is a headhunter, I think it's very crucial. There are a lot of headhunters who would focus on board members. Uh, membership. So um, I think it's important to invest into that. Secondly, um, yeah, if I, I'll talk, I'll, I'll speak as if it was me. I would think about um, first what my priorities are, what kind of board that I'm looking for. Um, so if I have a choice, if, uh, you know, sometimes you're just invited to a board, sometimes you're asked uh, and you can't say no. But in general, you need to think about where you think you can uh, deliver the best. Um, and then, as I said before, limit the numbers because if you have too many, um, then you'll be struggling. And uh, it doesn't matter. I, I'm a firm believer that you should set time for yourself as a person because if you're not calm and you're um, uh, relatively less stressed, it makes it very difficult to, um, um, to deliver. Thank you so much, Sheikh Lubna. But what advice would you give um, for somebody seeking or a woman seeking to join the board of a listed company? Um, in my opinion, uh, it is not about always re remind yourself that it is not about gender. It's about who you are, who you want to be, and what you want to achieve. Exactly similar to what uh, Sheikh Lubna mentioned. Um, in, my, in any domain, it is all about commitment and merit. That is what really matters in, in the business. Um, my advice is you have to believe in yourself and to be who you want to be. This can sound simple, but this is really important. Back to you, Mina. 
Thank you so much, David. So we have a number of questions related to diversity. And, and the, the questions are saying that one of them reminds us that diversity is not just gender and age, but also diversity of backgrounds. And for example, here in the UAE, we have people from um, different nationalities that might have different experiences, they'll have different laws in their own country and so forth. So do you think there are opportunities for international um, professionals, so women from different nationalities, to join boards in the, in the UAE, but widely in the region? Is that something that's looked for? And also this idea of getting, I mean, one of the questions says independent board members. I'm not sure what they mean by independent, um, but I guess, um, would uh, are there enough independent board directors in the GCC um, in, your, in your assessment of the, of the boards uh, in the region? Sheikh Adab, now I'll ask you that question. Um, independent board member means that if you formulate a board with shareholders and publicly listed companies, you have to have independent board members who are not um, conflicted or influenced by the, sh the shareholders. So in definition, um, they, you try to strike a balance as a board, as an organization, companies will do that, so that there would, there would be a balance in terms of decision-making strategy moving forward. So definitely. Now, when you speak about the diversity of culture, um, in general, I think the diversity of a board uh, centers around several things, uh, depending on the organizations themselves. Uh, if this is a fintech, you need the technology knowledge of expertise. If it was nuclear, you need some board members who have that. Um, uh, you need people who are senior and understanding of uh, share values and uh, profitability and finance for the organization and investment. Um, and then you need the general board to understand everything else that's needed from everybody. However, um, if you have a company, for example, like Coca-Cola or like uh, PepsiCo or Johnson Johnson, where you're actually focusing on um, culture dependence on some of the products or profiling a particular age or group, you definitely would be looking for that as well in people of different backgrounds. Um, uh, so yes, I, I think uh, it, it can happen with some particular boards, but not all boards, um, but it can, it can play a factor. Thank you. If I can um, ask the organizers, please, to um, put up the diversity question again for the polling so we see if we've changed the minds of any of the participants um, regarding whether diversity should be mandatory in all boards. And again, diversity not just being uh, female diversity, but diversity at large. And Saib, I'll ask you the final question as we um, get prepared to, to wrap up this session. And that is about what you what you would look for um, in the profile of a candidate. So if you're looking at profiles, you're not meeting these people, what would you look for in the profile of a candidate for a board? Um, I think uh, the finance, financial background is, uh, is really important, especially in our business. Uh, our business in oil and gas sector, it is more about um, capex, OPEX, uh, managing both uh, financial deci decision when it comes to uh, executing any of the project. I think the financial element is really important and this is also will serve in many of the boards, if not uh, all of them. Uh, a person with a solid financial background, this is number one. Uh, number two is the technical uh, part related to, the, to each company. For instance, uh, in oil and gas sector, again, it is better to have somebody with oil and gas or with energy uh, background. This is uh, will easiest the, the, the decision making process, let, let me call it. So I think um, diversity, again, it is important that you need uh, a member with a strong background in human capital and organization and managing many, uh, maybe of course, uh, it, it depends on the company model. But again, the, 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 the number one item is the financial, the solid financial background. Back to you. Excellent. Thank you very much. So our question was, should diversity be made mandatory in all boards? We've gone up to 84%. Um, so we were first at uh, 50% and then um, only on listed boards got 8% and no is at 8%. So, so just to let you know that there was, you skewed some, some of our, um, 
some of our participants. Um, we, have, we have five minutes before we close. So I would like to give um, each of you the chance for a final word um, as we're talking about this uh, important subject of gender um, diversity on boards. Uh, the, the, the hope from this session is also to focus on listed companies um, and how that diversity can be introduced for listed companies. So Sheikha Lubna, a final word from you about how companies can be thinking about the CEOs, but also those who are interested in networking, as you said, and being familiar with where those opportunities lie. Um, I, I think um, when, when it comes to opportunities, um, um, part of it could be right there, and some of it you have to seek it out. Um, so going sometimes to um, organization that can help recruit. I mean, the idea that Aurora um, uh, uh, initiatives that they have right now of uh, prepping, training people to get the right skills for being board members, I think is a magnificent one because that can drive uh, more opportunity for uh, men and women. And uh, uh, the diversity in itself, again, um, it, it can add value. It cannot diminish value. So um, definitely um, the, the all types of diversity in companies would be very important. Thank you, Sheikh Lubna. And Saiba, a final word from you um, about uh, gender parity in boards and also uh, that networking element of having more women uh, on the table. I think if you look at the uh, example of uh, UAE in the past 50 years, uh, female played a major role in the success that UAE achieved. And it is not my, my, uh, my words, it is the words of our leaders and the words of our of uh, Her uh, Excellency Sheikh Fatma bint Mubarak herself. She was part of this uh, success. So be, for, for the female being in the board, this is just a compliment to all the successes that we have in the, in the past. And I hope that uh, since this year is the year of the preparation for the next 50 years, inshallah, of success, I hope to see more females um, uh, being in the, as a board members in, in, uh, in, in many, in many uh, uh, companies. And I hope that we can help and play a good role in achieving that. Uh, to the percentage of, uh, sh should we have a um, KPIs or uh, a quota for females? Uh, I believe in that because if we want really to drive change, we have to have at the beginning some KPIs to drive this change. Just uh, comments on that. Uh, back to you, Mina. Thank you so much, Leiva. I think the, the question of affirmative action, KPIs, quotas is a very interesting one. Um, the World Economic Forum's annual summit in Davos always would get in trouble because the participation of women participants was usually at about 20% at maximum. Usually it was 18, 90%. Then they mandated for the strategic partners that are coming, they had to have, if they had five delegates, one of them had to be a woman. And that helped push it to 20%. But even at that, the idea that even with a quota, you could only get to 20%. And they would often say that we as organizers are trying, but it's really companies that say we don't have enough senior management people that we can bring in. So it's, it's across the board I and mean, you see it in the business world, but I think you see it also across the board, ensuring that women can actually get to the top levels of decision making. This has been such a rich conversation. I thank you both for your frankness and your willingness to, to share your experiences yeah. with us. Um, Please, for those of you who have attended, do give us your feedback um, through the, the web app that's there on this session. And um, all I can say is that I myself feel enriched by the session, have learned a lot from you. Networking elements may feel a bit difficult given um, the COVID-19 uh, situation that we're finding ourselves. But I think through this platform of Aurora 50, we have had a great uh, time and time to, to learn and also network. So thank you and thank you to the organizers. Thank you, Mina. Thank you, Mina. Thank you, Sheikh Lubna. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, a, a huge thank you to Mina, Sheikh Lubna, and Tabor. Uh, it was an extremely insightful session. And we are just so, so thank you for, for all of the support that you've given us um, for today and for the 20 for 20 initiative. So thank you so much for your time.
We are now coming to the end of our first day. Um, and I would, of course, like to thank all of our speakers, our moderators, um, and our supporters um, for the board summit. We, of course, could not do this without our partners. So thank you so much for your dedication um, and for your support, especially in the last few weeks leading up to this event. I'd like to thank everyone who has joined us today for the summit. Um, as, as I mentioned at the start, we will be uploading all of the recordings. So do look out for these in your inbox because we'll be sending a link to your emails. If you haven't done so already, please do follow us on social media. And of course, don't forget to share your post event feedback you will see a button on the app to do so. And your feedback is really important to us, so please do share that. I would also like to highlight um, the on-demand session, Building the Pipeline to Increase Female Representation at Board Level. What are leading organizations doing to drive gender diversity? This is with Manus Cranny um, from Bloomberg, Fatima al Nawami, and Maha al Khatan. I think you'll find it a very enjoyable session and we'll learn a lot. Um, we certainly had a lot of pleasure filming it. Um, please do find it on the app. Um, it will be available um, now and all through tomorrow as well. We look forward to seeing you back again tomorrow. Would also like to highlight that there will be an important announcement tomorrow by Sheikh Sharma bin Sultan bin Khalifa Al Nayan. Um, that will be taking place at 10 a.m., followed by the, uh, the session on Are You Board Ready? Uh, with Ashley Summerfield and Dr. Laura Lulzfoot-Dorf. Um, then we have Adding Value as a Newly Appointed Board mem Member. And finally, um, Fidelio um, in the afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. See you tomorrow at 10 a.m. sharp for that important announcement by Sheikh Sharma from us. That is goodbye, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.